Hallelujah. Let us go to the scripture. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus in the book of Joshua, chapter 23. God is good all the time. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. It is a great blessing that we might be here this morning, early in the morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Seeking the face of the Lord. Hallelujah. Book of Joshua chapter 23 verses 6. We'll have it. So read the scripture with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise his name. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. That he come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make a mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. But cleave unto the Lord your God, as you have done unto this day. Amen? But cleave unto the Lord your God, as you have done unto this day. Let us lift our hands in prayer this morning, amen, and ask God his blessing on the word. Father God, we give you the praise. We give you honor. We give you the glory. We've come together, Lord, to praise you, to worship you, and lift you high, O oh God, because you alone are worthy. You deserve all the praise, God. But, Father, we've also come to sit at the table to be fed by your word, to receive a touch from your hands, to receive that blessing that we came looking for, oh God. You're a wonderful father. You're the good father that knows to give the best things to his children in the right time, oh Lord, and in the right place according to your will. Father God, I ask your anointing, oh Lord, that allows the preaching to flow, oh God, and reach, oh God, the inner parts of our hearts, oh God, that you may speak to our hearts, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, and I give you thanks, God. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Amen. But as you sit, amen, do not sit on the worship. Continue to praise and bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And once again, I encourage you, if you have difficulty following the English, amen, please use your headphones because there is translation in place that you may understand with freedom. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to... Meditate on the Word of God this morning, but under the topic, cleaving unto the Lord, or in other words, drawing close to God. Amen? Drawing close to God. We are living a time where everything goes against the Word of God. Everything goes against His commandments. Everything goes against His principles. Everything goes against what He says, because... God has given his, his commandments, amen, that we might live by them and have, have a future. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are living in a times just like the people of Israel when they entered into Canaan. But we have to try to live in such a way that even when we are in Canaan, even when we are in that blessed land, we are in the land, but we shouldn't let the land come inside of us. We live in the land, but don't let the land live inside of you. God had given a clear and straight commandment to the people of Israel. He told them, I'm going to bring you into a land of blessing. I'm going to bring you into a land that flows milk and honey. I will drive out before you the nations. Hallelujah. But you should be careful. Be very cautious that you not allow the things, the customs, the things that the nations before you did, that they might not come in your heart, and you will not give your sons, you will not give your daughters to them, neither will you take from them to you. Because you are my people, and I want you to stay holy. I want you to stay pure. And it is the same thing we are living nowadays. God blesses us. God gives us the best. God provides for us. We just sang the song that says, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, he, he is the one that takes care of me. And God blesses us. He takes care of us. But sometimes we don't know how to manage the blessings that God gives us. We don't know to distinguish, hallelujah, the line that we shouldn't cross. 
We need money, but money should not be the most important thing in your life. We need money, but we shouldn't love money because that is the sin. The love for money, the love for riches is the root of all evil. So God blesses us, but he uh, warns us and tells us to be very careful that we don't allow these things to invade our lives. Amen? So God had given his commandments clearly regarding the promised land. But we see how the world goes against God and he wants to drag down, the world wants to drag away everyone that is not cautious, everyone that is not careful. And we see, for example, the word of God says, he created a man and a woman. But the, the, the world says, hallelujah, a man and a man, it's okay. A woman and a woman, it's okay. Everyone going against the word. Everyone going against the scripture. We see God said, go and multiply and fill the earth. But we see nowadays the world says, no, you have a right to have an abortion. It is your body. It is your, hallelujah, you decide what you want to do. Going against the scripture, going against the word. We see the word of God says, I am coming soon. Be ready. The world says, he hasn't come yet. We've been waiting for so long, 2,000 and something years, and he still hasn't come. The, word go, the world going against what God has said. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So the question rises, how can we live in the midst of all these things going against the scripture? How am I able to stand? How am I able to go forth? How am I able to be, hallelujah, a true child of God in the midst of all of this? Well, first of all, let me tell you, it is possible because God is faithful. And he will never demand something from us that we cannot fulfill in our lives. If he asks it of us, if he says he says for us to be faithful, it is because we can be faithful. If he demands from us, hallelujah, loyalty, it is because we can be loyal. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But the key to all of this, the word of God was telling here through Joshua, be careful, hallelujah, make an effort. It says, be therefore very courageous because it takes courage to go against the flow. It takes courage to stand alone, you against 50, you against 100. It takes courage. And the Lord says, be very courageous. Don't give up. Do not be dismayed. Be courageous. Have, hallelujah, that courage in your heart to go against the flow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it says, be courageous. To keep and to do. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. To do the word. To keep it. But the key is, in verses 8, it says, All of these nations that are among you, these that remain, don't mix with them. Don't be, hallelujah, deceived by what they might tell you to go against me. Don't. But he says, cleave unto the Lord your God. Draw close to him. That is the secret to keeping yourself pure from the world. That is the secret from not, uh, uh, to not allow the world and its, its, hallelujah, its ideas to come inside of your heart. To draw close and near to God. The word says here, to cleave unto the Lord. You know what it is to cleave? You know when a baby is scared? Does he just run to the mother and stands there near the mother or the father? And No. The baby runs and cleaves to the parent because he's afraid or because there's something he doesn't know. He cleaves unto the parent and that is what God wants you to do with him. Draw close to him. Cleave unto him. Even when the flow is going against his word, it's going against the scripture, it's going against what God has established for your life, the key to stand is to cleave to God. Because sometimes the storms of life will blow so hard that you might think that you will also be taken by them. But if you cleave to God with all of your strength, with all of your might, and you might say even in the times, Lord, I, I don't have strength. Hold me fast. Keep me safe. Hallelujah. I want to cleave. I want to be close to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. God had made a pact. He had made a deal, let us say, now a, a more modern word, a deal with the people of Israel. 
Amen? He would keep them. He would bless them. He would prosper them if they kept their end of the bargain. It's just like you and I nowadays. It's like a deal. I might say, I'm going to give you the house. I'm going to give you food. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. As long as you do this and this and this and this. It's a deal between two people. It's the same thing that God did with the people of Israel. He told them, you will have my blessing. You will have my protection. You will have, hallelujah, everything I will provide for you as long as you remain faithful to me. So, in other words, the deal can never be broken on God's side. Because God doesn't lie. God is faithful. God is true. The deal can only be broken by us. We are the ones that usually break the deal that God has made with us. And we demand sometimes so much from God, but we don't remember what is in the deal. The deal is that God will bless you, God will protect you, God will keep you, hallelujah, as long as you are near to him. As long as you keep his word. As long as you do as he says, you will have everything that God wants for you. But the moment I step away, the moment I decide to take another path, the moment I want to do what I want, the deal is broken. And so I cannot have what God wants from me, even if I ask it because I'm not doing what is in the deal. So God has told them, hallelujah, to be faithful to him, love him, serve him, never depart from him. Do not go uh, um, after other idols. God is faithful and he cannot break the deal. It is us who break it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But that's why, hallelujah, he gives us the key. To cleave unto him, to draw near unto him. And the word says there in verses 9, if you may for a moment. For the Lord had driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man had been able to stand before you on this day. One of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he is that fighteth for you as he had promised you. So we see God, hallelujah, uh, frees us, protects us from great and terrible things. The word says from great nations and strong. But it was not by your strength. It was not by your intelligence. It was not by your abilities. It was not by anything that you could do. It was me that fought for you. He reminds them because we have a tendency, just like the people of Israel, that when we step into the blessing, we have a tendency to forget who is it that brought us into the blessing. And we think maybe when we are enjoying that blessing, we are enjoying what God has provided, what God has done in our lives, we have the tendency to forget and think that it is by what I have done and think that it is by what I know and think that is what I, what I can do. Do you remember Nebuchadnezzar? He was an instrument of God. He was a wicked man. An idolatrous man. A man that was, didn't believe in God. He had idols. In fact, he raised an idol of himself. Because that was the type of man that he was. He was an egotistical man. Only concentrated on himself. Can you recognize yourself in him this morning? We concentrate sometimes only on ourselves. And he forgot because it was God. The word says God used Nebuchadnezzar as a tool, as an instrument to punish his people. And there came a time, because remember, the word of God is faithful. God told them, no nation can stand before you. I will fight for you. But what happened? Israel had departed from the ways of the Lord. Israel broke the deal. And then what happened? The Lord said, no, now I have to punish you. And he used his instrument and brought them to punishment. And God blessed Nebuchadnezzar because he was the instrument. But what happened? One day, Nebuchadnezzar lifted his head and looked and said, oh, this is the great Babylon that I... 
have built. And when we take God's glory, whoo, it's something God does not mess with. And he said, this is the Babylon that I have built. Immediately, boom. Word said he fell to the ground, he became a beast, nails grew, hair grew. He was an, a horrible thing to the sight of man. Because someone that takes the glory of God is a horrible thing to the sight of man. The heart of that person is bad. It's horrible. Just like Nebuchadnezzar was to the sight of people, that is how the heart of man is when we think it is we that do the things. And God had warned him, if you read through the scripture, before that happened, God had warned him, there's going to be a day where you're going to think that it is you that had built the Babylon. And the day that you do that, I will punish you. So in other words, he had a warning. He could have thought about that and say, oh Lord, help me to not do it. But yet, he did it. And he remained in that condition until what? For seven years, he remained in that condition. You see how stubborn the mankind is? <laughs> how stubborn we can be? Seven years. I wouldn't, uh, me saying right now, I don't know. I wouldn't, in, in one day, the next day, Lord, please, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But this man was so stubborn. He kept that condition for seven years. Until the day the word of God said what? He lifted his head and acknowledged, Lord, it is you who have done everything. And the moment he did that, transformation again. He became a man again. Because it is when we always acknowledge God, when we recognize that it is him, it is he who has brought us this far, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hallelujah, the one who never changes. It is when we acknowledge him, that's when we truly have an open mind and an open heart that can follow the things of the Lord. So God told them, remember, you will go into the land, but remember, it is me. I am fighting for you. I am providing for you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And verses 11, he says, Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that you love the Lord your God. Amen. In other words, he says, Be careful. Make sure that you love you, the Lord your God. Because the blessings is, are going to be so abounding, so bountiful, so much that you might lose sight of what truly is important. To love God above everything, everyone, every circumstance. You should love God above them. That is the secret. If you love God, hallelujah, you will cleave to him. You will draw close to him, hallelujah. And you will not allow these things to damage you. Amen. And God continues to warn them because in verses 12, if in any wise you go back, because to turn from God, there's nowhere else you're going to go. It's backwards. If you go back, and cleave unto the things of these nations, even those that remain among you, and you marry them and go in unto them and they to you, know for sure that God will no longer drive out any of these nations from before you. But they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from of this good land which the Lord your God had given you. God tells them, listen, if you break the deal, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm no longer going to be able to bless you. In fact, because you have forgotten that it is me, it is I that have done all of these things for you, I'm going to turn all of these people against you. And they will bother you so much until you perish. Amen? From the land that he has given us. He wants us to be close, brethren. Three times in this passage, Joshua makes an emphasis to the people and tells them, Everything that we have, it is because God has given it to us. Three times in this passage, 
He makes this emphasis, remember, remember, remember everything that we have, all that he has given you, it is God. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Cleave unto the Lord, draw close to him. You know, I'm, I'm standing here from a distance, I see you, but if I draw closer, I can see you better. If I draw closer, I can hear you better. If I draw closer, I can touch you. From this distance, I can. God can, but I can't. I can't. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's why God wants us to draw close to him. And if I draw near to you, from this distance, if everybody talks, I can hear a whole noise coming for, towards me. But if I draw close to one, that voice that I draw close to is going to be the one that I'm going to hear. It's going to be the one that will be the loudest. That's why God wants you to draw close to him. That you might see only him. That you might hear only him. That you might touch only him. That you might cleave unto him and that he might be your everything. Your all in all. That's why he wants us to draw close to him. This morning, this day, we're having a, a, a fasting. It is an opportunity for us to draw closer to God and to say, Lord, what do you want to say to me? Lord, what do you want me to see? What do you see in me? Draw closer to him. Show him your heart. Show him what is inside. Let him have an encounter with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He wants you close. He wants us close. When we are close, we are safe. And to finish, you remember the chicken? When there is danger... The chicken starts to cluck and spread the wings, spreads the wings so the chicks could see there is danger. Let us draw near. Do the chicks just stay there? No. They run towards the mother and they go under her wings and they are safe from the danger. That's why God wants you to be close to him. The word of God says in one of the prophecies, I have extended my wings over you. I have given you that, that shadow, protection, provided, provided for everything that you have. But the moment you step away from me, you step away from the blessing. You step away from the fountain. Draw near to God. This morning, the, wor the word of God is giving us that same warning that Joshua gave. Be careful. Be cautious not to forget that it is God that has brought you here. That it is God that has given you everything that you have. And be careful, hallelujah, to draw near. Be courageous. Stand against the world. Stand against the things that do not please God. And God will lift you up among all of these other things. And they will see and acknowledge that God is the only and true God. Amen. How many can praise the Lord? Let us stand to our feet this morning. Hallelujah.